Hey guys, Andrew with Blue Collar and Rich. Uh, again, congratulations if you're on my page. It's because you're seeking out financial intelligence and some financial guidance and education. Big props and respect for you to, to find this page here. So, uh, I want to talk about money. And I know that's not a big surprise, Andrew. Your page is called Blue Collar and Rich. So, funny enough, I want to talk about money. What is money? So, we've got three kinds of money. There's fiat currency which doesn't have any intrinsic value. That's the money we use for our day-to-day -day operations and transactions, right? So we, uh, we have that in a plastic physical form or a digital form. There's far more digital currency out there than there is in the physical form. I mean, think of any time you buy something with a credit card. Well, you just created digital money out of thin air, okay? Here in Canada, many of our uh, dollar bills are actually uh, plastic uh, and see-through, all right? I like to think that that's a nice little reminder for us that what you're holding in your hands doesn't actually have any intrinsic value. It's not worth anything on its own, okay? It's just, it represents a value that we all agreed upon, but other than that, it doesn't have any worth, all right? Then second, uh, the second type of money we have is intrinsic value money. So gold, silver, coal, um, uh, oil, uh, cows, cigarettes obviously is a form of money. Those items actually have a worth uh, associated with them, right? So that's intrinsic value money. And then third and final, we have the receipt money, okay? So an example of receipt money would be your, your coat check ticket or your, your valet stub, because that's a contract, that's a promise. That is a, a piece of paper that represents something of value, okay? So that would be the third type of money. And so you're, right now you're thinking, Andrew, that's all fine and dandy. I could probably dig up all this stuff on, online myself. Um, how does this benefit me? Well, my, my biggest shock, my biggest surprise when I talk to people about their finances is that they have no idea what's coming in the door and what's going out the door. So that's my first advice to someone who's trying to improve their financial situation is like sit down and actually look at the numbers. Guys, what I do is I sit down at my computer every two weeks like clockwork. No matter what's going on in my life, I set aside that hour or whatever, whatever I need. Every two weeks, I sit down on my computer and I calculate what money is coming in the door and what money is going out the door. I don't, I'm not expecting you to be uh, an expert in reading financial statements, um, although everyone should have a basic understanding of what a financial statement represents. First, you have your income statement, which um, uh, summarizes your income and your expenses. And then you have your balance sheet where obviously that uh, su uh, summarizes your assets and liabilities, and that would calculate your net worth. I would argue that your cash flow, your income statement, is far more important than, than your net worth. Um, and there's, there's arguments that would go both ways on that one, right? But coming back to the numbers here, I regard your financial health um, much in the same way as brushing your teeth. We were all told as little children that you have to brush your teeth every single day. It's only going to take a few minutes first in the morning and then again at night before we, we go to sleep. If you only brush your teeth once every six months, then your teeth are gonna rot and fall out of your mouth, okay? So why are we treating people's finances in that way? Why are you only sitting down and looking at your numbers once every three months, once every quarter, once a year even, or even if that? Some people have no idea what's going on. So then, I mean, you wouldn't jump in your car and go driving without knowing your destination. And this is no different. So I always encourage people, if you're, if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling frustrated about your finances, sit down and look at it, okay? I'll probably make a video in the future on how to work with Excel. I'm no, I'm no expert by ex, uh, on Excel by any means, but uh, there's tons of, video, of videos on YouTube to, to learn the basics and learn how the formulas work. And what I do is I input the data and then I make a, a graph which is a, 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 an image that represents what my financial situation is doing. So every two weeks I sit down at the computer and I can tell if my financial situation is getting stronger, weaker, or staying flat, okay? And that, that information is so valuable because if you don't have that information, how do you know what kinds of decisions to make that following week, all right? And it's, it comes back down to just staying on top of your situation, staying on top of those numbers. I understand sometimes it's scary. I understand sometimes those bills are piling up and it creates anxiety and frustration inside and, and that's the last feeling you want to say, feel, so you put it off, you put it off, you sweep it under the rug. You know, you, like I said, you, like I like saying, you put your head in the sand and then finally one day you're forced to confront that situation and it's 10 times worse than it could have been if, if you just sat down on a regular basis to review your numbers. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys out. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this. Um, and, uh, you know, leave a comment if you want me to uh, review some specific information that's uh, maybe uh, perhaps tailored more towards you. Um, I'm going to enjoy this beautiful Kelowna weather 
and uh, get back to my day. But you guys enjoy yourselves. Take care and uh, all the best. Talk to you soon. Bye.